Early this year, the price of petroleum dropped to about 120 naira per liter. And as we were rejoicing on the low price of petroleum, it went up again to 145 naira per liter. And at the moment, the price of petrol has gone up to about 116 naira per liter. And in the midst of this, government has announced full deregulation of petroleum. What is the implication of this on Nigeria's economy? What actually informed the deregulation, especially happening during the COVID-19 <coughs> pandemic? Joining me in the studio to discuss this and answer our numerous questions is a petroleum marketer, the MD CEO of Topsy Nigerian, Topsy Oil Nigerian Limited, Mr. Tunde Meshioye. Mr. Meshioye, you are welcome to the show. Thank you for having me back again. Thank you, Mr. Meshioye, for finding time to join us to come and discuss this very important and sensi sensitive topic. Now, the price of petrol has gone up again. Okay. In one year, we have had 123 naira per liter, okay. 125 naira per liter, 145 naira per liter. Now it's about 160 naira per liter. What informed this recent hike in petroleum price? Well, uh, we can't really say it is a hike in price, although to the general public, it's a hike. But government, what government is simply doing is that they can no longer <coughs> subsidize PMS. And government want to go into full deregulation, which actually they've been dealing, dealing you know, about over the years. But the situation of our economy, which we all know that resources is dwindling, you know, since the crash of the crude oil price, government has lost a lot of revenue. So government doesn't have enough money to run quite a lot of things. At least you all know that they borrow quite a lot from different organizations across the world. And looking at that, they are now at a critical decision. You can't, when you lack funds, you can't be giving out free money. You know, because it's, it's an area that government see that, look, we can't continue in this manner. Because... Nigeria being a monoproduct uh, economy, over 80% of federal government earning comes from crude oil. So whatever happens to the price of crude oil, which government has no control over, affects our economy. And that is summary of what is happening. Before, when government used to earn you know, good amount of money from crude oil sales, when the price was as high as between 80 and $100 per barrel. So it was easy to subsidize without much challenge. Now, it was the time could oil price crashed to below $25. That even was even difficult, you know, for them to even sell. That's why at that time, government was set up a committee to review the, the budget for the year. So, and I know that at this point, government has no choice than to handle, you know, subsidy. The only thing they need to do is to allow the force of demand and supply to dictate the price, which is what they are trying to do now. At least over the time, for years, they've fully regulated uh, AGO, which is popularly known in the public as diesel. Nobody hears any noise about that. The same thing we apply to PMS. Fine, it's going to be very tough at the beginning. But now, government needs to hands off totally by allowing marketer. Everybody that has capacity to bring in PMS to do so. Unlike, you know, like AGO. Because they still control it, it's not everybody can bring in PMS within the industry. Only, you know, some people. You have to go through an NPC. But AGO, once you have your funds, you have the capacity, you can bring your product. So when that is fully done, then you now see the, the force of demand and supply come into play. Then the price begin to you know, adjust itself. Government will only be providing guidance and regulations here and there, which actually, that is the original 
in your responsibility. But as it is now, government is majorly the one selling PMS to everybody, which government has all business and not in business. The major and primary responsibility of government is to create an enabling environment and allow private sector to drive it. But the reason why it's this high is that fact, we are still importing. That is the ultimate solution. Because now, on one part, government will be praying for the price of oil to go up so that they can earn money, you know, which is a plus. But because we are importing, we are not benefiting from that. Until we begin to you know, refine our consumption locally. I think Nigeria is the only you know, petroleum exporting country that still imports petroleum products. It's an irony and it's an aberration. I said it during my last, you know, you know, my last uh, interview here that it is an aberration that at this stage of our development, as a notable oil exporting country, there's no justification for us to still be importing petroleum products. Okay, thank you. This is a sensitive uh, matter. Very. And I would like to open the phone lines to viewers to call in on the show. Is that either to ask questions or to make comments? Mr. Meshoye is very much here to respond to every question. Now, Mr. Meshoye, now that it's been deregulated, yeah. you are a petroleum marketer. Yeah. Does it mean more money for petroleum marketers? No, there is it's not much more money. Because in practical terms, the profit margin is not really affected. The challenge that you now have more funds you need to run your operation. For mm. example, when the price, you know, for example now, based on the circular that came from NFPC, the S depot should be 151 Nera. Okay. Unlike before, which is around 131 Nera. Now, to load, you know, to load a truck, a tanker of, you know, PMS at the depot, at 131 Nera, you will know the amount. Now it's 151. So, and mostly the margin that you make between, say, three Nera, that margin still remains the same. But it puts a lot of financial pressure on oil operators. But what you have been buying at 100 Nera, now you are buying at 150. So that means you will need more revenue to be able to buy similar quantity. And the margin is not really affected. Now, and you know when most virtually all of us go to bank to source for funds. And the cost of funds is going to be high because let's assume you used to take, say, about 50 million to run operation. Okay. You now need about 70 to 80 million. If they calculate the current interest rate percentage, let's assume you are paying 25%. 25% of 50 million is made from 25% of 70 million. So you need more money to pump to be able to get the same volume of product. A lot of people who run retail operation, Philly's region, that we call Philly's region, mm. they are crying now. Especially those who don't have much liquidity, mm. you know, to run. Maybe they are fund they need that they can use to buy, you know, two trucks. They have to stock to buy just one truck, you know, for the station. And they have to replenish their stock. So they need more funds. Run. And it does not mean that the margin is going to increase. No. Margin practically the same same. Sometimes it even goes down. Because now the volume, the purchase power of people have dropped drastically. Hmm. Those who have been buying people hardly buy a food tank now. <coughs> you hardly see. Hmm. People buy a quarter or half. And the days of illegal movement up and down is over. Before you begin to move around, you have to be sure that that place you are going to worth it. So a, a lot of factors are involved. So volume at the retail end has also dropped drastically. They're also not selling much volume as they used to sell. And our industry, you know, is volume driven. You know, this the volume you've sell at, we, we, we run on volume operation. Margin is slim, but when the turnover is high, you are able to survive. But now margin is low, you know, and you know, they are all struggling to survive. If it continues like this, you see a lot of relationships with, with product. It's a matter of time. Hmm. 
Now, talking about the filling station, really, the regulation operates very well in a free economy. Yeah. And it's supposed to inspire <coughs> competition. Yeah. And competition is expected to bring down the prices of products. Yeah. Do you expect that happening with the prices of petroleum in Nigeria? That can still happen if government, although recently they announced that they want to hands off to allow marketers to dictate the price. Hands off, what I would expect them to do is that the same template that was applied on AGO should be applied on PMM. On AGO, they totally hands off. So it is forces of demand and supply. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it crashes. So sometimes we have to even beg people at the depot to buy AGO from us because virtually everybody has product. And once everybody has product in storage, in that, you know, force of price forces everybody to align. And not until when that happens, when that happens that when they open up fully, they give everybody free hand to bring their products. So competition will set in. If, as of today, some people are selling, the government recommend S depot price to be 151. Some people are selling below that price. As of today, it's 140, 50 cover. That is forces of demand and supply. Because somebody who has, say about, um, 10,000 empty metric tons, that's about 11 million meters in the storage. And he's looking at the time to pay back to bank. Government says 71. When they see somebody, okay, can you say below? Which volume do you need? You sell. Hmm. So, as of today, at least, very, I hardly see any depot selling at 151 because people are not buying. So, demand and supply, once demand is low, Prices will come down. It's only when the demand is high that you see, you know, you, you normally understand during first scarcity, yes. price should up. Sure. Because you have very high demand and low supply. Now, the demand is low. How many people are buying much at filling station? Very few. Depot has product, payment. The only advantage this thing also give all that, you won't see scarcity. All the stress and the suffering we go through, even at the filling station will be eliminated. If you like, put your own at 151. When you don't see anybody to come near that storage, nobody will tell you to bring it down. So as time goes on, with time, that will come to play. And as more people come to it, you know, to bring in, price begin to come down, little by little. But for us to get to a very good low price that will help the economy until when we refine our own product locally. And that is the ultimate solution. Okay, I'll come back to the issue of refining our own products. Some speculators have also mentioned that we are buying at 160 or thereabouts now. Okay. That it is just the beginning and it may still go up. Yeah. What is your take on that? That's a statement of fact. Because the major component that determine the price of petroleum products is the price of crude oil. If the price of crude oil goes up, you should expect the price of the products to also go up. So that is a statement of fact. Government has no control over the price of crude oil. It's an internal product. So the only way, and because we are importing, beside the price of crude oil, which is about 80% of the component of the final products that we all consume here, there's also the challenge of FS. Because <clears throat> we know the rate of FS some months ago. We know what it is now. Most importers are having serious challenge to raise forests they can before they can import. How many people can get through the official quota? Very few. A lot of people have to go through the parallel market, probably known as black market. And when you buy dollar at over 450 naira per dollar, Everything will boil down to the final, you know, to the, to the final cost of the product. So we have that challenge because government, you know, the, our economy is go, is struggling. There's no doubt about that. So it will have been much easier, if not because we need to import, there won't be pressure on Naira because everybody is scrambling to get dollar, and the dollar is not enough to go around. So even because if to say we are not importing, 
You know, that pressure won't be there. We can actually manage our price control locally. Okay. Since we produce our product, you can determine internally. But because you have to import for another country, and you have to buy in dollar, mm. you have to buy in dollar because that's international you know, uh, currency with which you can buy you know, products. Most importers now are going through a lot of stress in importing products. By the time you get here, the price will be high because they have to factor in the exchange rate. And except the price of crude oil crashes again. There was a few months ago when we have it, when you joined in your, in your opening remark, you know, when we have it at 123 Naira per liter. It was at that time, the price of crude oil was around $25 per mm. barrel. Now it's over $40. You can see. As long as the price of crude oil goes up, those prices will go up. That is, and we have no control over it. Because that is the danger of food regulation. But there are, there are other benefits to it. Now, the, the, the amount of money that government will have been using to subsidize the price, it can be channeled to other economic plan to cushion the effects on the citizen. No doubt, there's going to be a lot of economic pressure on all Nigerians. Because whether directly or indirectly, we all consume PMS. PMS, yes. Whether you have a private car or you go by public transport. And besides that, other consumer goods, transportation system affect them. Because cost of virtually everything, it's very food items. You know, recently they just got a bag of rice, got to know about twenty my wife was telling me twenty eight thousand naira per bag. Hmm. What we used to buy at fifteen naira, fifteen thousand naira. I see. You see, you talked about the benefits to the masses. There is a lot of public, huge public outcry against the recent hike in petrol. Okay. And the masses are not seeing these economic benefits because what is happening to them is petrol has gone up, transportation has gone up, because transportation has gone up, the prices of food has gone up, and everything happening when they have low disposable income. Yeah. Do you think this deregulation is happening, at, happening right now? Is, do you think this is the right time for it to happen? Well, um, is it not here or there? In terms of timing, I think government find itself in a tight corner. Because I'm not a government spokesperson, but I just, try, I just want to be objective. If the state government has a leeway to shift it, no matter how long you postpone an every day, it usually comes. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 palaver has making the matter worse. This decision ought to have been taken five, ten years ago. We're only shifting it, shifting it. But like I was, you know, talking to some people in some other fora that have the ability to speak, that that's about two, about three years ago. I said, it will get to a time when government will box them in a tight corner, that they have no choice than to answer. And that was happening here. The reason why government is doing this at this period is because they are broke. They have no funds. We all see major any of other government is from crude oil. And they've lost about 60% of it. The time they review the budget for the year, it wasn't that they want to do it. It was a situation that forced them to do that. Because we are, the amount of money they were expecting was not forthcoming due to obvious reasons. Okay. So now, what's the way out? We, need, we have to cut down. So those areas, that's the first thing to go. I'm very, they, it's not that they are also comfortable with it, but it's like they have no choice. Hmm. It's just like, you know, when you are going on the road, and your car broke down. You need to get the area boys to help you put it aside so that you don't become a nuisance. Sure. You might not be comfortable, but that period, you put off your jacket and, boys, please, we need to do this. Because at that time, it's an emergency situation. Nigeria is an emergency situation because our economy is going through a tough time. Earnings has dropped drastically. Even the, the plans being put in place now, 
it will take some time. I learned that, okay, the VP is heading a uh, crime stability plan. They are just starting. Hmm. And it's not the day you start a, a plan that you start seeing the results. It was, it's a beautiful plan, but my concern is that I pray and I hope that they implement it fully. If that plan is implemented fully, then you know, there will be you know, light at the dark of the end tunnel. Because we are good at putting plans together in this country. It is about implementation that I do have challenge with. Brilliant proposal. I've had several brilliant proposals in the past that end up in the trash can. Hmm. Because if we have been implementing all the good plans the previous years, Nigeria will not be struggling at this moment. Hmm. We are struggling at this moment that things we would have done five, ten years ago, we left them undone. How long does it take to build a department? When we know that they will have do, okay, let's say a role playing scenario, that if crude oil goes to this price, this is likely price that's going to happen. Will our citizens be able to afford this? What can we do? We didn't lack solutions. We didn't lack people who have the goodwill to implement good plans. Hmm. If they play that in a role play scenario, they will have an idea, likely implication of this action, which we know is inevitable. But okay, how do we put something in place to mitigate the process? There's, uh, there's no challenge without solution. If you have the right people in the right place who can think through and also implement sincerely. So by that time, what I've done, Dr. Okay, Fine, I know that it will get to date mm. five, ten years ago. Now, okay, fine, this will happen. Okay, let's put, you know, measures in place that will mitigate effect the, the, the negative effect, which is what we are seeing now. Within two years, a mineral refinery can be in place. That, okay, it's a temporary measure. Pending when the major refinery will fully in. Now they are waiting for Tanguti refinery, which is a private one. We know that was a big major one. It can take years. Within a year or two, government can focus fully. Because we know that once we implement this task, which we know we're going to do, price will shoot up. Public will be calm. But if you have no need to import, then the price can come down. Okay, thank you very much. You talked about the solution being having our own refinery. Yeah, that's your As at now, the ones that we have are in comatose. It's a, it's they are not working. <laughs> and then uh, we all seem to be waiting for Dangote refinery. Yeah. And Dangote Refinery is an individual, it's a private organization. He can decide to also sell at whatever price that he likes because it's not being deregulated. Mm. Some school of thought have also put up the fact that we can have modular refinery. Yeah. I wanted to explain the concept of modular refinery and how it can help us to get out of this doldrum. Well, the uh, modular refinery, the, the difference between one and the bigger that is something that can be quickly put up within an average of two years, to produce what we can consume. At least to prevent us from importing. Because the major challenge we are having is because we are still importing. So, because we own the crude oil, fine, we might sell at the market price to hazardous. We won't be punishing ourselves selling to ourselves. Because it's like if you have a farm and you plant cassava, you need Gary, which is the finished product. You can sell at any price to hazardous. You only pick the one you're going to eat. Maybe, you know, for purpose of record, you might just a passion price, but not at the killing price whereby you're going to buy. But if you are a farmer and you are lazy enough not to process your cassava into Gary, you now have to go to your neighbor to buy Gary. You know, he can decide to sell to you at any price because he has to make profit of you. Because since you have a cassava plant, you can't process to get Gary on your own. Then you pay the price, which is what we are paying now. We have crude oil, but you know, due to our inefficiency within our system, we couldn't process what we need locally. We are now to import you know, for, your for our consumption. So we are paying the price. So the modern value, why everybody is clamoring for it, that it is faster to put up on like the big gigantic ones. That if government, because even the one government is managing is not being well managed, although we know they are obsolete. Even when they are obsolete, year in year out, 
to spend money on turn around maintenance. Money goes in, you hardly see them producing anything. That's why, you know, you know, some years back when you know the former president of Apostle Joe took a decision to sell it all. I was delighted that at least that's the right step in the right direction. Until when you know President Yadua came and revised that decision. Because he was trying to put it in the hands of the five people who will run it, you know, and produce locally for us. You know, but that era has passed and we are paying the price. Hmm. So now they are waiting for the Dangote. Fine. Is Dangote being a private person also with Salbert? Definitely, I know because he has a lot of back, a government backup. There's going to be some discussion. He won't sell to us at any price. He just be like, definitely that will be concession because he got a lot of government backing, you know, in putting that uh, structure in place in terms of forest because most of the equipment they are using there are imported. At the time when forest was very hard, they were getting them across to him. Possibly because they know that it's going to open up a lot of things. Other auxiliary companies who also go up, you know, plastic manufacturing companies and other auxiliary companies will go up on that axis and it will really help us greatly. But when we stop importing, we'll save a lot of forests. It will also end forests that will also end because it's going to sell to the other African countries. The capacity there is not, it's bigger than what Nigeria can consume as well. Okay, let's, let's leave that apart. And this is going to be my last question. Thank and you. I want you to answer it in less than one minute. <laughs> On a personal or professional note, okay. if you are made the Minister of Petroleum, what would you do to solve Nigeria's problem on petroleum? All I need to do is to ensure everything done to stop Nigeria from importing petroleum products, no matter what it is. One that can be achieved, every other thing will fall in place. Thank you very much. And on that note, we'll wrap up today's episode of Nigeria's Economy Today. We want to thank Mr. Tunde Meshioye, the MDCO Top Sea Oil Nigerian Limited for coming on the show. The conversation continues on our social media platform. I would like to ask you to join us again next week. Same station, same time. I remain Tunde Odeyemi. God bless Nigeria. Nigeria's economy today, touching base with all you need to know.